सो हे स्टूडेंट्स आई होप एवरी वन इज सेफ एंड साउंड एंड डूइंग एक्सट्रीमली वेल दिस बस फॉर आज आम योर बायोलॉजी मास्टर टीचर वेलकम टू वेदांतो नीट इंग्लिश स्टूडेंट्स इन टू डेज वीडियो वी विल बी लर्निंग एंड अंडरस्टैंडिंग द एंटायर चैप्टर ऑफ योर फोटो सिंथेसिस इन हायर प्लांट्स विद द हेल्प ऑफ एन अमेजिंग माइंड मैप नाउ लेट्स फोकस ऑन द सिंपल डेफिनेशन वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ फोटो सिंथेसिस फोटो मीन्स लाइट एंड सिंथेसिस मीन्स टू प्रोड्यूस समथिंग टू सिंथेसाइज बट लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड द हायर डेफिनेशन photosynthesis is a physical chemical process now what is the physical process here it is the exchange of gases and the chemical reaction here is the production of your glucose now we know the famous chemical reaction which is your carbon dioxide plus water in the presence of light and chlorophyll is getting converted to glucose and a by product that is your water and oxygen is been evolved now i'll tell you three main points here which you need to note down the first point here is your CO2 is getting reduced to your glucose. Now, what is the meaning of reduction? The meaning of reduction is to gain protons or gain of electrons. So, your CO2 is gaining protons and it is getting reduced to your glucose. But what is the source of this protons? The answer is very simple. That is your water. The first, it is a reduction process. Now, the second point here is the light energy. in this reaction light energy is being consumed so it is a endothermic reaction the third point here is it is a anabolic process that is from a simple substance a complex substance has been produced if i want to summarize the entire process in the entire of photosynthesis inorganic substance is getting converted to your organic substances that's right then we go on to your site of your photosynthesis so where does photosynthesis takes place the answer is very simple the photosynthesis takes place inside the chloroplast yes inside the chloroplast the entire photosynthesis takes place that is inside the chloroplast we have the grana where the light reaction takes place and we have the stroma where the dark reaction takes place if you look at the diagram here we know the chloroplast is a double membrane structure where we have your thylakoids each coin is a thylakoid the entire stack is called as grana then we have the entire stroma here now i want all of you to focus on two points here that is the on the thylakoid on the thylakoid we mainly have two photosystems that is photosystem 2 and photosystem 1 but on your stroma lamella we only and only have your photosystem 1 that is very important now please note that on the thylakoid light reaction takes place and in the stroma the dark reaction takes place the other than that we have certain experiments such as your variegated leaf experiment which shows us your presence of chlorophyll we have koh experiment which shows the importance of carbon dioxide belger experiment by joseph priestley which shows oxygen is involved then we have engine house that is light for photosynthesis is important then we have von soch experiment which shows that glucose is getting converted to your starch and this reaction is taking place inside the chloroplast where chlorophyll is involved then we have your tw engelmann experiment which shows that which wavelength is important then we have vanil experiment which shows that the water is the hydrogen donor and in the case of your certain purple and green bacteria h2s is the donor there now we go to the pigments let's understand different pigments here pigments involved we know we have your chlorophyll a universal pigment chlorophyll b xanthophyll and carotenoids now let's understand based on the pigments we have two spectrums that is your action spectrum and absorption spectrum the first one is your absorption spectrum the absorption spectrum tells us that at what wavelength which particular pigment is getting absorbed that's it then we have your action spectrum action spectrum shows us that at what wavelength action is happening what is the action here photosynthesis is happening at which wavelength of light and if you notice there is a two main regions that is your red region and blue region that is the different spectrums then we have your finally the reactions that is your light reaction in your light reaction we have your it's called as your photosphorylation because there is involvement of your light energy here and phosphorylation is happening what is the meaning of phosphorylation that is the formation of atp is happening that is addition of phosphate and your in your light reaction we have mainly two types one is called as cyclic other one is called as non cyclic and in non cyclic i'll tell you the most important point is it is non cyclic in nature 
दैट इज इलेक्ट्रॉन्स डू नॉट मूव इन अ क्लोज सर्कल दैट इज कंप्लीट लीनियरिटी देन वी हैव हियर इज इन्वॉल्वमेंट ऑफ बोथ फोटो सिस्टम वन एंड फोटो सिस्टम टू दैट इज फोटो सिस्टम वन एट सेवन हंड्रेड नैनोमीटर एंड फोटो सिस्टम टू एट सिक्स एटी नैनोमीटर बोथ आर इन्वॉल्व हियर एंड देन वॉट आर द प्रोडक्ट ऑफ योर लाइट ऑफ योर नॉन साइक्लिक रिएक्शन द फर्स्ट प्रोडक्ट इज योर स्प्लिटिंग ऑफ वॉटर विच इन्वॉल्व द एवल्यूशन ऑफ योर ऑक्सीजन सो ऑक्सीजन इज इवॉल्व स्प्लिटिंग ऑफ वॉटर अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट इन द नॉन साइक्लिक रिएक्शन देर इज बोथ ए टी पी एंड एन ए डी एच आर produced now this atp and nadh will be used in your dark reaction later on apart from that this entire non cyclic reaction is called as z scheme then we have your cyclic reaction obviously the main here is electrons move in a closed circles so it is a complete circle here that is electrons are being sent back then it only involves photo system 1 only one system is involved here that is your stroma lamellae then we have here only atp is formed there is no nadh production here now what about the products here are utilized in your dark reaction which is also called as your biosynthetic phase now why is it called biosynthetic phase because there is a production of your glucose is happening here now here we have something called as c3 cycle and c4 cycle now let's focus on c3 now the c3 is called as calvin cycle the reason it's called a c3 cycle is because the first stable product is your three carbon here which is nothing but your pga phosphoglyceric acid here we have three main steps the first step is called as carboxylation where rubp is combined with oxygen to produce your pga then we have your reduction where pga is being reduced to triose phosphate which later gets converted to your glucose now in the second step two atp and two nadh is consumed in the reduction then we have regeneration in regeneration triose phosphate is regenerated to your rubp rubp in that step one atp is again consumed so in total there are three atp and two nadh is consumed to fix one co2 what is the main enzyme here the main enzyme here is nothing but your rubisco rubisco is the enzyme here which is an oxygenase and carboxylase both at the same time now what do you mean by carboxylase and oxygenase it can fix with co2 and also it can fix with oxygen so in certain cases that is the biggest drawback your c3 plants is that rubp can fix with oxygen when that happens a separate reaction takes place that is called as your photophosphorylation photophosphorylation is happening and this photophosphorylation is a very wasteful process complete waste why do you say because it is a process in which there is no formation of atp or nadh complete no the production but there is utilization of atp with release of co2 but plants require co2 and hence it's called as a wasteful process now to tackle this we have a smart plants called as your c4 plants they made sure they made sure that the rubisco enzyme doesn't come in contact with your oxygen so how did you do it they did it by a method that is having two separate chambers so that is that is the case in the case of your c4 pathway also called as your hatch and sac pathway now in hatch and sac pathway we have two different types of cells where the reaction is taking place the first one is called as your mesophyll cells and the second one is called as your bundle sheet cells in your mesophyll cells that is in the first cell where the co2 is getting fixed now in your mesophyll cells the co2 is entering it is getting reacted with your pep phosphoenol pyruvate fixes with your co2 which results in a four carbon compound called as oxaloacetic acid that's right that's why it's called as c4 pathway but the enzyme here is pepcase in the mesophyll cells which results in your production of your malic acid now this malic acid is sent to your bundle sheet later on now inside bundle sheet the second cell the malic acid is converted to pyruvic acid with the release of co2 and that co2 again undergoes c3 cycle so if you ask me in your c4 cycle a c3 cycle happening yes sir in your c4 cycle c3 cycle is also happening in the case of your 
bundle sheet cells where you have rubisco enzyme so if you see the line enzyme rubisco is absent from your mesophyll cells but it is present in your bundle sheet cells then we have your concept of your chemiosmotic hypothesis that is chemiosmotic hypothesis basically tells you how atp is being produced that's it that is explains the mechanism of atp synthesis in the thylakoid now what is the main principle here the main principle in your chemiosmotic is proton gradient there are multiple steps the way the proton gradient is happening but the end result is same what is the end result when enough of proton gradient is produced proton is sent to your stroma where adp is getting converted to atp now proton here is used up for rotating the f0 ring and the f1 has your catalytic activity which converts your adp to atp P. The last part of the chapter is nothing but your factors, a different factors which are affecting the photosynthesis. We have intrinsic factors and extrinsic factors. The intrinsic factors are internal, surface area of the leaf, number of leaves. But eccentric factors, eccentric factors are external factors which mainly includes the first one is your light, where intensity of light is directly proportionate to your photosynthesis. Then we have your carbon dioxide. Now carbon dioxide affects both, that is C3 plants and C4 plants equally. But the C3 plants has more saturation of CO2, that is they can absorb more CO2. So C3 are benefited, hence the principle of your greenhouse effect or greenhouse gases. In your greenhouse, we use more C3 plants. Then we have your temperature, where it mainly influences your enzymatic reactions. Then we have finally, we have the water, where it plays an indirect role that is whenever there is a decrease in water the leaf surface of the leaf reduces if surface area de decreases photosynthesis also decreases when there is less water the stomata closes if stomata is being closed co2 is not entering photosynthesis decreasing there it is the entire chapter of your photosynthesis in higher plants now students now what is your job your job is to go watch my detailed class on this this was just the introduction, just a brief summary. But if you want more video, that is the entire length of your 4 hours, 40 minutes video, please go watch it. It's on the channel. If you, if you want more content like this, like the video, subscribe to the channel. And also, let me know in the comment section, which is the next chapter you need for mind map. Until next time.